Welcome to this lab. In this lab, we are going to look at custom document extraction with Document AI Workbench. Document AI is a document understanding solution that takes unstructured data, for example, like documents, email, invoices, form, etc., and make the data easier to understand, analyze, and consume. The API provides structure through content classification, entity extraction, at one searching, and more. With Document AI Workbench, you can achieve higher document processing accuracy by creating full customized model using your own training data. In this lab, you will learn how to use Document AI Workbench to create and train a custom document extractor that process the W2 US text form document. Most of the document prepare, prepare, preparation work here has been done so that you can focus on the other mechanics of creating a CDE. A CDE stands for Custom Document Extractor that are specifically suited to your document and trained and evaluated with your data. In the task one, we need to enable the document API. So in that case, I can use my cloud shell to enable the API for document AI. To enable the document AI, you can use this command gcloud services enable document AI dot google api s dot com. Press enter. Yes, it's finished successfully. And now we will run this following command to install Python client library for document AI. The command is pip3 install dash dash upgrade google dash cloud dash document ai yeah it's successful install now you are ready to use the document ai api so with that i will mark the task one as completed task two we are going to create a processor you must first create a custom document extractor processor to use for this lab you must first create a form parcel processor instance to use the document AI platform for this tutorial. So now we go back to the Google Cloud here. I will close this because I already opened it in the different tab. I will go to the view all product. And scroll down to until you find artificial intelligence and click on document AI. There is also a video you can take a look. I will click on the create custom processor. Inside the custom extractor box, click on the create processor. You can give a name. Let's say I call this lab custom extractor. and leave it as default create so it's already created and enabled I will mark my task 2 progress as completed next task 3 we are going to define the processor field you are now on the processor overview page of the processor we just created. You can specify the fields you want the processor to extract and begin labeling the document. Let's get started. And then click on create new field. So we will enter the name for the field and select the data type and the occurrences. I have already entered the first label. The first one is control number and the data type I choose is number. Occurrence is optional multiple. And then if you are ready, click on create. So it says schema updated. And you should see a new field is uh, listed here. I also create another new label 
with this uh, call employee social security number the data type is a number the occurrence this time is different from the previous one it is require multiple and create now this field is called create uh, employer's name address and zip code and the data type is the address the occurrence is require multiple another new field here is federal income tax withheld and this is a money and this is require multiple create I have completed the creations of the new field you can also create and use other types of label in your processor schema such as checkboxes and tabular entity for example the W2 forms contains a statutory employee retirement plan and the party sick pay checkboxes that you can also add to the schema let's mark my task tree as completed now I will upload a sample document when I click on upload and in the sidebar click import document from Google Cloud Storage and then I will enter the path here and click import I will be directed redirected to the labeling console So in task 5, we are going to label the document. In the process of selecting text in the document and applying label is known as annotation. When you are at the labeling console, notice that many of the labels are already populated. And the results might look slightly different than the sample image. To use the suggested label, hold the pointer over each label in the side panel and click on the check mark to confirm the label is correct. You can edit the value if they do not match the document text. So I'm pointing to the employee social security number and they also have this employee identification number. In this example, the values at the bottom of the document will not identify automatically, so you will need to label them manually. For example, the stage wages tip. Let me highlight this. So I choose on the wages tip other compensation. And then this uh, label is listed here. So review the detected text value to ensure they are all reflected the correct text from the document. If needed, you can also create a new field to add a new field to the schema from this page. Mark as label when you finish annotating the document. Well, you still can change that. Let's say it's, this is the one. I will select this one. Confirm. So I'm finished. So I mark as label. And I get redirected to the get started tab. Task 6 build processor version using foundation model so let's click on the build under the core foundation model create a new version and I will call this as W2 foundation model and click create because I have a space in front so I remove the space now I can create optional here you can also click on the deploy and use tab on this page you can view the available processor version and the deployment status of the new version let me check my progress for task 6 yes it's marked completed moving on to task 7 use generative AI to auto label the document 
The foundation model can accurately extract fill for a variety of document type, but you can also provide additional training data to improve the accuracy of the model for specific document structure. Document AI Workbench use the label names you define the previous annotation to make it quicker and easier to label document at scale with auto labeling. So in the build page, we will click the import document. So click on the import document from Google Cloud Storage and enter this path. And from the data split, select auto split. This automatically split the document to have 80% in the training set and 20% in the test set. And auto labeling, we will select import with auto labeling checkbox. Select the foundation model version you just created to label the document. So I just choose the first one and click on import. And you must verify the auto label document before you can use them for training or testing. Okay, so click on start labeling to view and auto label the documents. You can use the suggested label, hold the pointer over each annotation and click on the check mark to confirm the label is correct. You can edit the value if they do not match the document text. Now if this is done, then you can mark as label. In the task 8, we are going to import pre-labeled training document. In this lab, you are provided with pre-labeled data. If working on your own project, you have to determine how to label your data. Now go back to the build page, click on import document. And in the site here, we select the import document from Google Cloud Storage. And then this is the path and this time is a JSON format and from the data split I will also choose the auto split this automatically split the document to have 80% in the training and 20% in the test set okay so now ready to import in the task 9 we're going to train the processor now that you have sufficient training and test the data you can train the processor because training might take several hours make sure you have set up your processor with appropriate data and labels before you begin training so under the train a custom model we will create a new version okay in the version name we will enter this Optional, click on view label stack to find information about the document la uh, labels that can help determine your coverage. So I click start training. You can also look at the deploy and use tab. On this page, you can view all the available processor version and the training status of the new version. Say if you want to deploy this, you can click on this and deploy. Deploy a version allow you to process documents sent to the endpoint and run new evaluation. Let's deploy that. So the base version that we just selected is this one. With this, we already deployed this version. So hopefully with this 
video, you learn how to create custom document extraction with Document AI Workbench.